European versus US market 126s. What's the difference? Recently, with a spat of Euro market 126s coming through our shop, I thought it would be kind of a fun idea to hone in on the differences between the European market uh, 126s, or really the, the rest of the world market 126s, and the. Sorry, I had to kill a roach. And the European market one twenty, the European market one twenty six is in the U.S. market one twenty six is now. In the United States, with the exception of the five sixty SEL and the five sixty SEC, which just barely made the cut, I'm going to make the argument that the one twenty six is never marketed as a high performance vehicle. It just wasn't, and uh, Mercedes didn't really. Uh, feel that that market in the United States could be met adequately with all the emission standards required. So uh, what they did was they, they basically sold us fully optioned puffed up 126s that were more focused on the owner's driving experience and, and the experience of having a luxurious car and an efficient car uh, than the experience of going fast and, and being, you know, a left lane. Vehicle now, this can be highlighted by the 380 SE and SEL, which only made 155 horsepower in the United States. The 420 SEL, which made 205 horsepower. Four different diesel models. The 300 SE, which um, was basically looked upon in Europe as the second lowest option package you could get in a 126. And of course, the 560. SEL, 560 SEC, 500 SEL, and 500 SEC, which were fast, but there were faster versions in Europe. Now, at the time, in the United States, these cars were still nothing to laugh at. They had plenty of power, and they were capable of doing lots of things that other cars at the time couldn't do. For a V8 5.6 liter engine in the United States during the 1980s and early 90s, to have 235 horsepower, uh, you were basically asking for too much, because... The Americans had still not really figured out how to engineer a, an overhead cam motor that lasted for a long time. Uh, the European versions, though, were way different because you had uh, more performance models being built in. So the 500 SE and 500 SEL from early on were 234 horsepower high performance versions. The 5 liter engine actually became the staple Mercedes Benz V8 all the way to the end of production in 1991. And in 1986, Mercedes added a hot version of that engine with roughly 270 horsepower tri-wide headers, 10 to one compression, more aggressive camshafts, uh, a more aggressive ignition timing system, and numerous other performance upgrades to make the car just as powerful as the 4.2 liter 400E. The, other iterations of the 126, such as the 560 SEC with option code 822, I, th I think it's 822, or the 560 SEL with said option code, delivered a shameless 300 horsepower if you got the high compression uh, package as well. And these basically put them in the same performance category as the 6.9 and the 6.3. Unfortunately, in the United States, Mercedes didn't want to go through the trouble of adapting these versions to meet our emissions, and also they didn't want to change the image of the 126 from a heavily optioned luxury car to sort of a strict performance car, because you could buy that in Europe as well. Now, in Europe, there were some other really great models. There was the 280 SE, which had 185 horsepower from its double overhead cam inline six and was available with four or five speed manual transmissions. Also, there was the absolutely wonderful and brilliantly designed 260 SE, which was a stripped car that was available to people who wanted all of the mechanical perfection of the 126 and they, who felt they didn't need a high performance car and didn't need a car with a ton of options. All the European cars were individually optioned, which uh, my friend Rod and I have talked about this. Europe has strict anti-bundling laws, which means that they can't sell you things that you don't necessarily want. Whereas in the United States, uh, you were basically, the, the dealers are basically allowed to say, okay, you have to have all these options together if you want this car, which is why all our cars came, came with sunroofs, leather, etc., etc. In fact, in the, in the European countries, 
1991, it was possible to buy a 500 SE with cloth seats, manual windows, no air conditioning. And if you wanted an electric sunroof and self-leveling suspension and trip computer, you could get all those things. The, uh, the European cars, in my opinion, seem to be more exotic because their options are all over the board. And I think they represent a really unique ownership experience for somebody who likes classic Mercedes. Uh, my friend Matt Kama, who, well, he used to be my friend. I haven't talked to Matt in years, but Matt's running joke was that the European cars also got the strongest engines and that they, uh, they felt that the U.S. cars were, he, he felt that they, Mercedes deliberately put the engines, the weaker engines in the U.S. cars, not that not they were bad or would blow up the ones that just, you know, were like, I don't know, just not as, not as enthusiastically built, maybe. Uh, if you're looking at a European 126 car, I always say check the car carefully for rust and check the car carefully to verify mileage because a lot of these cars have U.S. speedometers put in them. These cars, if they are rust-free and you, you feel the car was well-maintained, even if the mileage isn't totally clear, are still a great deal because they perform so well. And to speak to this, when we look at the volume of gas 126s we work on, we work in just as many gray market uh, cars, Euro market cars, as we do U.S. cars, showing that these cars have still maintained their popularity in the States because of their high performance and their fascinating option combinations. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, the gray market 126 is a great way to get into classic Mercedes. It's also a very inexpensive way because some people are wary about these cars and their emissions requirements. Uh, but I, I think they're great, and I think if you're fascinated by one, you should look into them more. And um, in the meantime, if you're supporting us on Patreon, thank you so much. And uh, hit the bell for notifications, and enjoy your Mercedes-Benz. Nice. Seven great. minutes, eight seconds. Seven minutes.